How are you? Because um, I heard you were sick. A week oh, ago. actually, I actually had COVID um, last week. You did? The f no, for, for the first time knowingly that I've had it. Okay. I had, I had a cough for quite a long time in 2020, so I might have had it then, but this is the first time I've knowingly had it. So uh, it's really quite strange. I've, I've been socially mixing with people, you know, usual things, you know, quite intensely, not taking any precautions against uh, COVID since since all the uh, all the uh, the difficult period, shall we say, passed. <laughs> and uh, and um, and then last week I got it. Um, it was I wouldn't say it was a mild illness, but it was nothing like it was nothing like influenza. OK. You know, I've, I've said before, I had if you got proper flu, proper influenza. I remember once I came home from work with influenza in 1991 and uh, I was going to bed and I got to the bedroom floor and couldn't get into bed. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, was, I was so I was so sick and I thought if I die now, that's that, that's OK. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's influenza. Yeah, I, I know I was, exactly I, what you're talking about. So I, I knew I knew it, I knew, it, I knew it wasn't anything like that, uh, and uh, just turning my phone off. I always forget to turn my phone off, and uh, and I knew I knew it wasn't a cold because I wasn't having really the streamy type symptoms. So it's just a bit knocked off, a bit of a low grade fever. But I, I got the rash. I got quite an, an itchy rash. Yeah, I've seen your video about it, and you showed it. It was on your arm somewhere. You you, you showed a, the, the rash, but you had the multiple sites on your body. Your yeah, own. yeah, I had, I had I had a bit of a rash. So, but anyway, th 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 things are good now. Okay. Always very important to keep up your natural immunity, especially over winter. I think you know I we're, think. we're in. Well, you're not quite as far north as we are, but I'm at 55 degrees north. It's preposterous. People shouldn't be living up here. No, that's <laughs> so, true. But on the, other, on the other end, cold is good for you as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To be in the cold. But it it just means you don't make the vitamin. You don't make the vitamin D over winter. Well, it's 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 troublesome. But, but people live where you live for a long time, and they were healthy as. <laughs> so I think that the the, the 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 secret is to be outdoors and 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 to keep moving and, and yeah uh, just I mean go for a walk every day if you can. It's a good, uh, it's a good point. Live, People have lived, life, lived but, here for a uh, long time. We should be outdoors and 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 then even the cold is good for you. It helps you prepare for yeah that that's right and, and uh, yeah. it's important. But um, let us start more contact with nature. I, I still have to introduce you. Um, oh, go sorry yeah go for it yeah. <laughs> We had some phone conversations, so we know each other a little bit, and that's the reason we start talking straight away. But I mean, I'm talking right now with Dr. John Campbell, and that's quite an honor for me to 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 Not be at, all. Um, well, it, at least it feels as an honor to me. Um, let us introduce you properly, because mm. uh, as we know, I'm Dutch. Um, I've checked with some Dutch people. Do you know John Campbell? And some people do indeed know you, but some people don't. They don't know about your channel, which is a very important channel, I think. So um, John Campbell is a medical doctor, but he as well as a nurse. And that is something confusing for Dutch people. Could you <laughs> explain what the difference is? Yeah, right. OK, um, so I'm not actually a medical doctor. You know, I was a nurse all my life. Okay. I started when I was 18. I was a psychiatric nurse and a general nurse. Okay. And then I, I wanted to teach, so I became something called a nurse tutor. Okay. And then we had a prime minister in the 1990s. I think his name was Tony something, Tony Blair, something like that. And and um, and he, he moved us all into higher education. Okay. So we, we ended up in, in a university. So I did, uh, I did a bachelor of science degree, a master of science degree. I did a doctor of philosophy degree. Okay. And then when I got the Doctor of Philosophy degree, I changed my name from uh, John Campbell to Dr. Campbell. This is before people were known on, on, on the YouTube. So um, so I'm a doctor by virtue of my uh, PhD. Okay. But but I have spent all my life in uh, nursing, medical, bioscience. Um, the textbooks I've written, for example, I've written a textbook on physio human physiology. I've written a textbook on uh, disease processes, pathophysiology. Yeah, you wrote two books. Yeah, yeah. And and before the, the if you want to put the link, you can download them free. They're on PDF now. They're completely free. That's good. Yeah. And um, so I've always done biomedical things. And then when I became more popular, I realized that the doctor title was causing some confusion. <laughs> but by that time, it, it, I was already that's what I was already known as, so I didn't change it. So I'm I'm a doctor of philosophy and a lifelong clinical and uh, academic teaching nurse. Basically, I've spent my life working with people, thinking about diseases, thinking about how the body works, thinking about how the body goes wrong, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and trying to treat illness relieve pain relieve suffering and massively importantly is prevent illness okay to to, to optimize health and that includes physical health yep. and of course it also includes mental health okay which is just so important there's just so many people i don't know what you what it's like for you nico but i meet so many people and once you know them a little bit and especially if they know you've got a healthcare background they'll say you know you know john i do have to tell you the truth and they find it difficult to say mm -hmm. i have a bit of problems with anxiety or i have problems with depression or yep. i have problems with obsessive thoughts or my mind keeps going back to this particular traumatic time you know there's a lot of people really suffering out there and um yep. i think we have to be much more attuned to that and listen to people and and, and be aware of what they need and and, and help those around us it's good that you say that because I didn't want to talk about it, but I, I wrote a book on health. Um, I, I, even, I even have it here to show you. It's, uh, called the, it's called the Caveman Code. It's being translated into, uh, into English right now, in which I try to help people with their uh, general health, um, which I think is important because somehow we get lost in this modern world and yeah. somehow forget about our to, 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 to keep fit and to eat well etc et yeah so the trick with the modern to... world nico is to take out the good bits and spit out the bad bits yeah it's and all... sometimes it's difficult to tell which is which and that's exactly what i wrote a book about you yeah throw yeah. out all the bad yeah. things and keep yeah. the good things and uh yeah. if you look at the good things we live in an age where it's so easy to get all the good things because i mean it would have been impossible for you living up close to Scotland to get a coconut yeah. and I, 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 some, or a, a mango or a, and now you can get that and yeah. you can live as healthy as you as you want to as yeah. long as you know what to do what to get out of your life and what to get in and, uh, and so, so, so with the right knowledge usually not always but usually if you've got the right knowledge and the interest in this it's usually possible to live a healthy lifestyle yeah. that's also inexpensive yep so if, if if people are struggling for money and resources, many people are, and and it's sometimes easiest to pick up some ultra processed biscuits. Yeah, but actually, if you look at it in my local supermarket, very often you can get greens really cheaply. Yeah, you can get potatoes really cheaply. Yeah, um, eggs you can usually get for a reasonable price. Yeah, and um, you know if you think about just those basic things and and fruit, um, very often you can get for a reasonable price as well. So you can go in and one day apples will be cheaper or one day bananas will be cheaper or one day oranges will be cheaper. So just get what's available because our ancestors, as, as you know well, would have eaten seasonally. Yep. So it's like, it's like when my plum tree's out on my allotment, <laughs> I'll eat maybe a kilo of plums. I'm not saying that's a good idea, but that, that's what I do. I love them. But, but, but now there's no there's no plums there now, so I don't eat plums now, you know. So. No, but the, 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 the beautiful thing right now is that, okay, you can't eat plums, but so many things that you, you couldn't eat in winter, like 400 years ago, you can eat in winter because yeah. they still get into your store. Uh, it's yeah. just like you have yeah. to shop like a, like a, like a, like an old-fashioned uh, hunter-gatherer. So you have yeah. to get into Tesco with the idea that you start hunting and gathering. And that's what exactly. I write in my book. And and so so certain aisles you you certainly have to not pass through, and the other aisles you have to pay a little more attention to what's being sold there. Yeah. And, but I, we, I, we need, I yeah. The, uh, people often tell me, well, the way you want me to eat is very expensive, and it's not true because for not example, necessarily. I think it's a good thing to eat a lot of nuts and berries and and things like that, and they are expensive. But then when you have bought your first supply. You will only have like like forty grams of them every morning. So the first supply, of course, is is, is expensive and it holds people yeah. back. But once you have bought that and put it in proper jars, you will they will last for a long time. So mm. if you think about it, it's not like as expensive mm. as you think it would be. And yeah, uh, it, it it requires some knowledge and some mental input, which is 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 really important. Yeah. And I think the I think the other thing we're missing out is, is um the, the therapeutic effects. And the disease preventing effects of all these things. So I don't, I, I'm no authority on this at all. I've spent my life giving out traditional medicines made by big pharma. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's, it's what we do. We follow national guidelines and uh, we can maybe talk more about that later. Now, of course, drugs are completely necessary. I, I've saved many, many people's lives by giving them drugs, of course. Um, we, we, we need those. But 
so many things, so many specific nutrients that, as you say, can be inexpensive. Yeah. So, for example, I've started a few times a week. I now have turmeric milk. Okay. So I boil up some milk with some turmeric and a little bit of black pepper. And um, you know what? It tastes really good. Yeah. And when you <laughs> and, add the black pepper, it has a lot more value, the turmeric. Yeah, so I believe. Yeah, I'm yeah. just learning about these things. But, yeah. but the point is, once you get into the habit of it, it's actually really nice. So I look forward to it now. Yeah. You know, I'll be out on my walk and I think, oh, oh, I can yeah. have my turmeric milk when I get home. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> you know, it's... No, but that's a good thing. And it's so that's, that's what all my, my method is based upon to change your lifestyle. Yeah. All of this so and if, if, if you've got that kind of treat to look forward to, then you can take out less healthy treats. Yep. Yep. So I don't know. Maybe there's been times in your life where you think, oh, I'll get home and have a beer. Def, you know. No, but... <laughs> Well, in my in my in my life, there has. <laughs> you know, I think, oh, I'll get home and have a beer. You know, and you kind of look forward to that. But if you can yeah. substitute that with something else, True. Uh, that, then you know you can take out things that aren't so good for you and put in things that are. Good yeah, for but you. there is one thing. Um, the last few decades, we've grown so accustomed to eat and drink sweet and salt things. Yeah. If you take salt and sweet out of the picture, then there's so many tastes that are wonderful but we, we are no longer used to them we want the, those uh, sweden salt yeah. things and i have to step away from that and start looking for different tastes which are very good once you get used to them yeah i mean i think i think we're addicted to those things i yeah. think the salt the salt and the sugar are addictive yeah um, I'm not allowed to say so, but in my book, I, I tell no, people. I, 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 I'm quite comfortable saying that uh, there's been times in my life where I've been addicted to salt and sugar. I still have problems with sugar and carbohydrates. I'm, I'm trying to cut down, but a, a, a lifetime of habit is difficult to change. But you're right. These are such strong flavors. Yep. That they overwhelm all the subtlety. Yep. They overrule everything else. And we just take so much pleasure yep. out of our lives yep. just by... Uh, alcohol, salt, sugar, alcohol, shot, so, you yeah. know, sugar, to, for, high, high fat, high processed food, and all, all, all the delicate, lovely things that are in the created order. Yeah, th that, that we could be enjoying, we just kind of mask out. It's yeah. it's almost like we take this immediate gratification, whereas yeah. with a bit of thought, we could actually have way more enjoyment and satisfaction yeah. and. In interaction with the created world it's it's a pity that we don't do that because everything's there on the shelf it's bang 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 instant gratification yep. um and, and people don't take the time to enjoy these simple pleasures but but really some of the best things in life yeah there are the simple pleasures and I, that, that's exactly what i wrote the book about if you mm. just make a few changes you start to really appreciate all the beautiful things that are out there and, and have wonderful tastes. And, and, and But people are very septic until they start doing it. And then they come back to me, well, I, I, I wish I would have learned this 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, so go, go around, talk to your mother, talk to your grandmother if she's still with you and uh, and learn, learn from the traditional wisdom of our culture. It's true. <laughs> And there's a good saying in English, I think. It says, um, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. We do have such a saying, yeah. I'm not entirely sure it's guaranteed, but we do have that saying, yes. It helps, but it is, okay, yeah. but it is yeah, good. But no, no, fruit, fruit, fruit and veg. If a food looks like a food, that's good. Yeah. If it's in a packet with a barcode. You have to be suspicious. Think, think, think about it. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah. We'll get there and... Uh, I, I, I'm not so sure. We, I'm not sure, sure we will get there, Nico, you know. There is so much money, so much vested interest, so much advertising, True. trying to get us to buy their product, very often pushing us in a direction, which That's is true. not the one we would want to optimize our health. That's true. So I think I think there are opposing forces here. There's three voices, like, like, like as far as I know yours, I would hope mine. <laughs> um, there's a lot of free voices out there. Um, that go back to evidence, that go back to the science and say, look, th 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 this, this is what you are. This is the human condition. We do know something about how to maintain health. We don't always get it right. Many things I've taught, sadly, all my life have been wrong because the guidelines have changed. Yeah. But we, we, we are, the science is coming, this coming together now. It's you, true. you know, the, 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 there are basic things that we do, we are pretty sure about now. Well, and then we've got the vested interest trying to push their product 
yep. onto us. And and uh, I think the battle is going to be going on for some time. So I, I think it just shows the importance of evidence base, free knowledge, um, good quality doctors and science scientists being honest, teaching what they know. And I mean, I, I, I've interviewed some of the leading doctors around the world. You know, it's been a real privilege for some strange reason. I've got leading doctors and scientists that come and talk to me. <laughs> I can't work it out, but, oh, but but you know, there's some really great stuff that they say. Yeah, and if occasionally that conflicts with a a corporate interest, then who are you going to listen to? Someone who's making a lot of money out of trying to feed you, or give you medication, or whatever it is, or give you a particular lifestyle, or or someone who's spent their life, decades maybe, you know, looking at the science, looking at the health working out what is the optimum way for a human being to live which one are you going to listen to you know you, we have that choice and i think the battle might be going on for some time yeah but the the the, the problem today is that the title doctor or or maybe even having 30 years of experience doesn't guarantee that the person is completely honest and truthful i mean we've learned that over the last three years I, I'm, I'm quite afraid which is good as well because we have probably hopefully and your channel has helped uh, learn to be a little more skeptical about certain things and to 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 trust our own feelings at least a little bit. I mean, I'm I'm completely with you. Someone who has a lot of experience, someone who has studied, you should listen to him. You should learn from that person or him. But um, it has become a little bit difficult, a little bit confusing for people. And uh, we should never forget, I think, that we have a little say in it ourselves as well. And I always compare it to having a goldfish. I mean, if you have a goldfish and you go to a pet shop and you want to feed the goldfish, you don't start looking for uh, food at the dog section. You buy fish food. The other way around, if you have a dog, you, you don't give it fish food. And uh, we have a capacity as people to just understand what is good for us. But we have been misled for a long time in the, in, in the, on the shelves of supermarkets uh, with the big collars and whatever. And we have, we have slipped away into an unhealthy way of life. But I think that everyone deep in their consciousness knows what is good and what is not not good for to eat and to to to. So I, you just have to appeal to that sense of of, of yeah. normalcy, and and people will soon see it. And when they start experimenting with a healthy lifestyle, whoop, something changes. Because we, we we have really, it's my feeling, the last forty years we have truly gone down the drain health wise. I hope I'm exaggerating, but lots of people turn to me and they have neglected themselves for a long time. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you're exaggerating, no. Um, I would add that I think you do need some basic knowledge mm -hmm. to, to add to that. Um, I mean, when I first got my allotment, did you, did you, is that term translate allotment? Do you have uh, allotments in Netherlands? It's like a patch of land. It's, a, it's about 100 square yeah, metres. I, I rent it from the council. Yeah, piece of land. <laughs> you, can, yeah. you can grow food and trees there. Yeah. When I first got it, uh, uh, over 20 years ago now, but I didn't actually know the parts of the plants that you could eat and the parts of the plant you couldn't eat. True. So I had the old, the other old guys <laughs> around about me, you know, and, and they say, well, John, you normally throw this leaf away and you eat this bit. Yeah. You know, yeah. there is knowledge that we, uh, that, that, we, that we, do, we do need there. But isn't it one of the saddest things about this past few years, Nico, that... We can't automatically trust people in leadership. Well, that's because exactly someone's a doctor, you know, because someone's a doctor, we used to think that's all right. They had our best interests at heart. Now we're actually in a situation where, of course, m most doctors and nurses are, are brilliant. Of course they are. But we get some doctors, may, may, maybe doctors that have uh, sought out leadership positions around the world. And, um, we can't automatically trust what, what they say. Nope. We have to question if they've yep. got other influences on, on their thinking. And to tell you the truth, I'm not really in a position to judge that. I don't know all these details. No, but... And, and, and what that means is, because there's so many things... Now I realise there's problems. Realise there's things I don't understand. That tends to make me a bit grumpy and a bit cynical. And, and a bit distrustful yeah and uh th th this lack of trust is is really quite a big problem we have to uh, try and 
analyze the evidence for ourselves and, and find people that we, we trust because I don't know what it's like in, in the Netherlands, but there's um we've got an inquiry going on in the UK and, uh, <laughs> you know, you, a lot of important things in my view are being left out of that about the COVID inquiry. But it, it turns out that a lot of politicians made quite a few errors along the way. Not quite, quite a few doctors good. made quite a few errors along the way. And uh, again, so, so, we have difficulty now trusting, automatically trusting professionals. We have difficulty automatic, automatically trusting politicians. And um, is is that good in that we've become more realistic? Well, I, I think for me it's good because I, I, I again had this slip in my face uh, telling me that it's I have to trust my own common sense and I have to do my own study and there is such an easy way to study because you have to eat the internet don't trust it but if you find consistent information uh, in multiple articles and researches well there is a basis of trust there and uh well we had the apple a day uh, analogy uh, earlier in, in in america they say money talks bullshit walks and uh, I sh you should always be aware of that and and even when it's a man in a, in a white coat or a woman in a white coat, you still have to be uh, slightly suspicious and, and see whatever he or her says confirmed in other articles. And that's what we learned, at least what I learned over the last three years. Mm. Um, it was a wake up call in, in a sense. Yeah. And that's the, 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 mm. how I try to make it a good thing. I, 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 I agree with that. And we have to be aware that for most people, most people are, are automatically. Um, programmed almost to conform yep. with authority so if you take if you take your idea that we're hunter gatherers then you know we lived in tribes of maybe 150 people mm -hmm. way, way back when mm -hmm. and and the reason that human beings became the dominant species on the planet perhaps is not because we're the strongest no, we are not, not because we've got the sharpest teeth no. not because we've got the sharpest claws not because we were the fastest no because we worked together. Yep. We cooperated. Yep. And that meant we had to trust and there would be a leader, presumably in, in a hunting expedition, there'd probably be one leader. And if you didn't follow the leaders, a good chance you wouldn't get back from that hunting e expedition. Yep. We worked together. But the problem is now we still have this idea where we trust authority. So there's famous experiments. I don't know if you've heard of these, the conformity experiments by Stanley Milgram. A horrible and, experience. Yeah. And, you know, basically he set up a mock experiment, yeah. told people to electrocute people with increasing voltages if they got the yeah. question wrong. It was the person pressing the button, of course, that was being experimented on. Yeah. But you had these increasing electric shocks and most people, because they were ordered to, to do, the, to do so, they did. gave these electric shocks. Yeah. And, you know, it's something like 70 percent of people were prepared to give a potentially lethal electric shock, believing they were actually doing that. They actually flicked that. Now, they didn't like it. They laughed. They cried. They had orders. They protested. But yeah. because the authority figure was giving the order, their finger actually moved that switch. Yeah. You know, and that that is that is terrifying. So, you know, we've got so many people around about us who, because they're human, are genetically programmed to conform to obey Let and that's you, uh, okay if we have good leaders but um I, I, is that going to be a self-destructive thing now i think is, is is a very good question to ask ourselves it's it's i have an even worse example because i spent two years of my life in afghanistan and uh, we were supposedly there the dutch army to help the uh, poor uh, afghan people well i started to look into that and they weren't so poor and they weren't in need of any help because they were quite sufficient for themselves. The only thing is they lived a different life and they have a proper right to do so. And quite honestly, I'd rather stay with them than get back to the civilization I knew because they lived a lovely life and they had rules among them, the tribes. There were very strong rules that kept the, the tribes alive and, and, and hospitality, you name it. It was all based in certain rules. It was a wonderful life. But the simple fact that we didn't understand them gave us the right to bombard them and to shoot at them at times that it, were, that it was completely uh, unacceptable. And the only one raising his voice was me. 
I, I wrote a book about it. It led to questions in Parliament and etc. But whenever the order was given, triggers were pulled. I mean, we know that from history, and I don't want to talk about that, but I, I mean, it was appalling to be a part of that and to see it happen every time again. Well, I, I had the permission to shoot. So then you shot? Yes, because I had permission. It was allowed. <laughs> I mean, it was Ter terrifying. Experience. Terrifying, yeah. And I, I know... Um... Yeah, I, I know people from the UK that were killed in Afghan and uh, well, they were young, they were young. And shouldn't have been there, in my opinion. I don't, I don't think so, no. But whatever, let's No, no, I, 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 think, I think we do need to learn from history, uh, from, from history, Nico. I mean, I mean the, the, the Dutch people and the British people, you know, we've we faced tyranny before. Yeah. Between us, you know, and we're... Yeah. we're, 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 we're Co cooperated with the rest of the free world and we've overcome that tyranny you know our, our peoples have worked together and you know yeah but there's, it makes, makes me makes me feel proud it is but there is the question remains why are we so obedient right now and so conformist right now and it's a question that's bothering me for a long time and and one of the things and maybe you have different experiences but one of the things i've seen over the last 30 years that we have put more and more emphasis and we emphasize more and more consuming we're yeah. so busy consuming that we forget all up. as long as we can consume buy a bigger house buy a bigger car buy a bigger whatever i mean okay that's good and we forget about living in groups and we forget about questioning our leadership and we forget about we just consume and follow orders so we distracted in a way from the regular life that we should live in my opinion, I mean, yeah, I yeah, I, I agree. We, we we have moved away from that which is actually important in yeah. life. So, um, I mean, there's a few examples there. If you look at the the, the phone calls from the twin towers in at nine eleven, mm -hmm. you know, um, some of those relatives have chosen to release those phone calls, uh, and they don't say, uh, "Honey, I, you know, I wish we'd bought a bigger car." You know, they, they don't say, you know, we should have had a more expensive holiday. You know, when people know they're about to die, the last message is, look, I love you. Yeah. You know, um, it's it's the human relationships that, that matter. And yep. it's not it's not all these the, these other things that, that basically get in the way. And again, we're kind of force fed with this through advertising through through this culture. I mean, you, you mentioned the Afghan culture there. Mm -hmm. in, in Afghanistan, a culture we don't really understand. I don't oh. pretend to understand it. But there, there again, do we understand our own culture? Because our own culture has evolved so rapidly, Yeah, I think. And I, I would agree with you over the last 40 years. I would agree with that. We've had massive cultural evolution. And because it's our own culture, we don't recognise it for, for the often bizarre, ludicrous culture yep. That, that it is. It's it's like when I look, well, I try not to look in the mirror, but when I do look in the mirror, you don't really notice your nose because it's always there. Yeah, true. <laughs> you know, and your culture's kind of like that. It, it's always there. So we actually think the way we're living now is normal. But if you compare it to the way that the, the human physiology and anatomy and social structure is designed to live, then yeah, maybe it's not so normal after all. Maybe we need some introspection on that. And it's like I said back at the start, you know, the good thing, the thing about modern life is we have to eat the good bits, yep. literally and metaphorically, <laughs> eat the yeah. good bits and, and 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 chuck out the bad bits. And maybe maybe we need some more um, self-analysis and societal analysis self yeah, to, to work out what really matters. Yep. It's, a... it's true. Um, and I... I... Maybe the last three years have helped some people at least to 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 get there, but I, I, I don't know. It's difficult. Um, let's talk a people little. Keep, about... People keep people keep telling me about a red pill. I think that's a, a film called The Matrix. Yeah, and the the red pill means that you're in contact with reality. So, do we want to live in in a world which is oh so nice and everything's lovely, but isn't really real? Or do we want to be aware of the pain, suffering, trauma to come? Um, well, you know, and, and I think we need to live in that real world because yeah. if we're aware of the reality of that, 
maybe we can prevent some of the pain and trauma and suffering. That, that, I that think is you're come. right, but I think you have the same experience I have that um, I'm quite sure that you try to talk to as many people as you can as well, uh, but I find it pretty difficult these days. And I find that very a lot of people wish to stay in their comfortable world and in their warm bath. And they really, I mean, it was easier to talk 40 years ago about reality than it is now, because a reality is quite comfortable with the potato chips and with the, the, the Coca-Cola and with the video games and with the, I mean, a certain Mr. Harari told us very clearly that our future is uh, drugs and video games. Um, I, I don't know Mr. Harari, but no, you I, do don't. Hope my future, I do hope my future is not drugs and video games. <laughs> it's not, but that's what he's, uh, well, let's not get into that because it's, it's, it sounds horrible to me, but it's the, the new vision of, the, of, of mankind to enjoy video games and drugs, which I think is bad. But um, no, I'd like to go out walking outside. Yep. So let's keep doing that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, but it's I, I don't I don't know the example you mentioned, but um, g governments and people with power around the world are trying to impose their particular version of reality. They're trying to tell us what's good for us. They're trying to tell us what's bad for us. That they're trying, you know, there are there are influences trying to control us yep. in ways that we haven't. We we have had this before, as we've said, we've had totalitarianism in the past. You know, the Dutch people have been oppressed where they're they're, they're um, they had to carry identity cards, they had to work in a particular way, they had to uh, say particular things, they had to not say particular things. You know, I, I think I think we I think we do need to. To, to learn from that because there are there are forces now that are trying to control us trying to make us conform yep. and um maybe they're not always working in our best interests and the difference is now um with electronic surveillance i actually believe that the opportunities for uh, a totalitarianist um are much greater than they were um yeah. in the past it was maybe easier to hide below the radar because radar wasn't invented no it's true and now, it, now radar is invented <laughs> and it, uh it's we, we you know governments and international organizations are able to um control or potentially control huge swathes of the population by um electronic surveillance that's, and uh, and the, 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 there is that there is that verse in the book of Revelation, you know, that that no man may buy or sell, okay. unless he has the mark of the beast in in his forehead. Now, you know, if you if you think about a situation twenty years ago, where it could be controlled that you that you can't use money, that you can't buy or sell, that would be unimaginable. Yep. But now, in 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 cashless societies or essentially cashless societies. You know the the, the 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 theoretical potential is now there that someone yep. could control wh whether you buy or sell and um you know if prophecies are there for any reason one of the reasons are there is to warn us about potential dangers that, that we can avoid and um the potential dangers of of electronic surveillance are there and well, we need to take measures against that i would have thought quite honestly is is as to that regard uh the last three years gave me a, a warning as well. It's only over the last past year, past three years that I started to investigate what's really going on. I mean, I was occupied with my own life as well, in, in my own simple way, my own together way, but still I was occupied with my life. And, and the last three years I've taken a slightly different approach in seeking my information and it scares me what's happening. I'm warning people, but I feel like, a, like someone shouting out in the desert because... Uh, it's difficult to be heard and, and, and it's difficult because of the digitalization of the world to get your message out because it's, it's, yeah. I'm simply, I'm cancelled. So it's simple yeah. as that. My messages yeah. are blocked yeah. and you still get out into the world, which is a, yeah. which is a good thing, but you have your trouble as well, I think. Oh yeah. Well, I think problems are so obvious at the moment. Yeah. They, they jump up and jump up and hit you in the face. Yeah. But they're obvious to you and they're obvious to me, but um, they're not so obvious to, to, 
ninety percent of the world. And that's yeah. what, what what that's what's scaring me. That's what's yeah. bothering me. I mean, truly, it's what keeps me awake at night. How to break through? Or maybe I'm stupid. Could be. I mean, I don't think so. Again, you know, we go back to the history. You know, Solomon Ash did these conformity experiments. Mm -hmm. And most people, it turns out, were prepared to say things that they knew weren't true <laughs> because other people were saying it and they didn't want to be the odd one out. And, you know, again, we have the possibility of people with the mechanisms of control and and uh, humans have this tendency to conform. And and, and as you say, that, that that voice of one one in the de shouting in the desert, you know, the, the old English version of that is the voice of one crying in the wilderness, you know, and that, of course, is John the Baptist Yeah, in the Judean desert. And uh, most people were just complying, following religious tradition, following Roman orders. But, hey, you know, there was one man. Crying out. One voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Oh. You know, you know what, what, what one man had the vision in the whole country. And uh, he, he turned out to be a, an instrumental prophet um, and... But what do you think then? Is conformity a human condition? Yeah, I, th I, th I think I think there's a natural tendency for human beings to conform. I think that's what Solomon Ash and Stanley Milgram teaches the, the, this seminal psychology. Um, but but you see it all around about you. True. You, you see it at work. I've done it at work. You know, there might be something at work that concerns you, and you and you just comply. Now, there's something. There's some things. You know, if you're an ethical human being, there's some things, there's some red lines you won't cross. Mm -hmm. um, you would hope. Yeah, um, but but a, a lot of other things, you just say, let's have an easy life. But it's, that's alarming in a way. Is there anything yeah. we can do about that? I mean, I mean, I've, I've, let's, if we get into your uh, channel for for a few seconds, um, mm. I'm watching you for a long time. Uh, I just by accident I, I I found you on the internet YouTube channel and uh, you had such a pleasant voice and such a pleasant way to bring a certain data driven message to people that, that, that was quite agreeable to watch. Although at the beginning I I had quite some when I saw you three years ago two and a half years ago for the first time. Um, I was sometimes skeptical when you said certain things. And then throughout the years, I have somehow, maybe I'm wrong, seen like a revolution in, in, in your thinking. There has been a change in mm. you. I, that's what the way I saw it. Am I correct? I think you are. I think, I think it's to do with what we were talking about before. It's this erosion of trust. Mm -hmm. So um, as, a, as a clinical nurse and as a nurse tutor, you always had to teach the latest guidelines. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, if, if, if you want to talk about a drug, <clears throat> um, it's got to be in there. Yeah. <laughs> We're in a situation where, you know, obviously at work, you've got to follow guidelines. And we have National Institute for Clinical Excellence, yeah. the, the, the NICE in the UK. And they, they give guidelines for all these treatments. And, and when you're at work, and when you're teaching, you have to follow the guidelines. You know, it's, it's just what you, what you have to do. But the trouble is we've got, as guidelines have progressed, um, some people believe it's taken away the individual clinical decision-making, the individualization yeah. of care. And I think that's probably true. But the point is, I just, um, just retired from uh, full-time um, nursing teaching work. And... Um, I was probably still working part time, but um, all our lives we, we'd followed the guidelines and we had no real reason to question the guidelines. But then I started talking to you know, really leading doctors and scientists around the world who were questioning the guidelines. Mm -hmm. And then you realize that just a minute, th th this official narrative is not necessarily correct. What you've trusted all your life, yep. the way you've thought all your life and that's really quite difficult to accept sometimes um, that just because something is a national guideline does not mean it, it, it is it is the correct thing to do. So, yeah, you're right. I've become much more questioning and, and, and really gone back to fundamental principles. What is the evidence? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, so 
the 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 what we have actually taught on this from, from the 1990s is 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 David Sackett was the father of evidence based medicine. Yep. And he said you have to ha go by the latest evidence, which is true. Mm -hmm. But the point is, the latest evidence often comes from medical journals. And what gets into medical journals is research that is done. Mm -hmm. And research that is done is research that someone has paid for. Yep. And that's so that, that means there's a whole range of research yep. that, that isn't paid for, <laughs> therefore doesn't get into the medical journals. Yep. So, you know, th there's a distortion. There's a distortion there, really. And the second component of evidence-based medicine is expert opinion. Mm -hmm. We go with, that makes perfect sense. But if those experts in some situations have vested interest, could that distort what these experts are telling us to do? Yep. And the third component of evidence-based medicine is patient preferences. What is acceptable to me as the yep. patient? And that's predicated on a fundamental principle of informed consent. But if there's question marks over what is researched and what is not researched, mm -hmm. if there's question marks over international expert opinion, then how can I possibly have the knowledge to have informed consent? Yeah. I can't. So that means these three fundamental principles of evidence-based medicine, mm -hmm. the evidence, can we know, can't fully trust that anymore, Expert opinion, can't fully trust that anymore. Sometimes oh. we can, but not always. Um, my individual preferences based on informed consent, well, Down the knowledge brain. is there. How can there be informed consent? So I, I, I think really I'd like to think, mm -hmm. I'd like to think I've tried to be loyal to these principles of evidence-based medicine. Mm -hmm. But the difficulty is it's very difficult now yeah. to do that. And... We're also in the situation where some information is permissible and some information is not permissible. How can we have got into this situation where yeah. um, there's some things you're allowed to talk about and there's some things you aren't allowed to talk about? And this has crept up on us, actually not that slowly. No. It's crept up. It's come on us fairly quickly, actually. Yeah, the latter part is, is, is crept up. Yeah, and... Really. and, and you know, when I'm now, of course, you we, we know, um, you have to choose who you talk to. But but the people I talk to are, are professors, mm -hmm. consultants, career scientists. And, and when people like this question, I, I believe it's pretty stupid not to at least listen to their opinions. But there's there's ranges of opinions now that we're simply not allowed to discuss. And, and I just find that intrinsically annoying. If someone says to me, you can't talk about that, yeah. then because I'm a bit mischievous, I think, oh, no, actually, I'd quite like to talk about that. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of the situation that we're in, unfortunately. And it's um, it's not it's not good for the development of science. It's not good for, you know, it's, science progresses on debate, on discussion. Used to. Used to, yeah. And maybe some aspects of science still do. Maybe, 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 but even then, if you look at physics and chemistry, again, that can be very commercially driven. Um, so you know, let, 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 let's let's go to the town square. Let's have an open debate. Let 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 the best ideas survive. Let there be a natural selection. Yeah, but there are so many people are preaching or praying for for uh, open debate, and they simply don't get it. Um, we are being censored. Um, yep. And it's one of the beautiful things, I think, in your daily podcasts, because quite often I hear you say, don't take my word for it. Don't trust me. Just look at the evidence yourself. You say it often. And uh, look at the descriptions below and, and, and go to the links. And, and that, in my opinion, is what science is supposed to be. I mean, you discover something, you get the data, you bring them out, and you encourage people to, to still use their own common sense. And... That for some reason has gone out of our societies, and 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 I mean it has been somehow bred into us to blindly follow authority. And if I look at my country, the authority the last three years, for example, when it came to health, uh, is the authority of a guy who used to be school teacher. He he he's, he's schooled children of about ten years of age, 
and the next day he was the Minister of Health, and I'm supposed to trust him. And he's the one who, for example, told me uh, two years ago that, what, that I would certainly die that winter if I didn't take part in a certain procedure, which I refused and I'm still alive. And he gets away with it. I mean, he, he, he literally told me through the television that if I didn't participate, I would die. And so did, is, if I remember well, the President of the United States. <laughs> I mean... Those are and, and of course, the, <clears throat> these 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 <coughs> authority messages are the ones that are promoted in the in the traditional uh, legacy media, and and most people just seem to go with that, um, you know, because if information is controlled, you know, it's often said the first casualty of war is is truth. Yeah, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> We have to uh, we, we we have to struggle for the truth now. We have to analyze it ourselves. You know, we we have to we have to be more sociable. You know, if we have local groups of people, mm -hmm. then you know you'll find that one person's good at practical things. You'll find that one person's good at academic things. You'll find yeah. that one person's good at languages. You find that one person's good at science or medicine, yeah. and, and you know we, we can come together in local groups and discuss these things, and and uh, work out what is likely to be correct. For, for ourselves and our own small social groups. And again, there's this lack of cooperation, this lack of local socializing, I think is is part of the problem. You know, we need to we need to be able to talk through ideas with people that we trust. Yeah, but then um, I, I'm so afraid that, that that's maybe missing now. Well we have to take money out of the equation. Yeah. Because as long as it's there, we will not be able to talk anymore. It's the fear I have. I mean it, the last three years, I don't know how it is with you, but I lost a lot of friends in that sense that um, I used to have really tough debates with my friends, which I loved. Yeah. Evenings, they went on and on and on about whichever topic. Uh, now we talk about the weather. Uh, and again... That, 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 I find that really sad, Nico. That is really... But there is no... It, I mean, relationships it, have become superficial. It, it is. If, if I which I like to do, refer to an investigation or a research while I'm talking to someone. I, I have had discussions over the phone where I had the research literally laying in my lap and people telling me, oh, Nico Norton knows how what's happening in the world and it's not in the newspapers. Who do you think you are? My good friends who should know that I had the paper in my lap and had a proper conversation has gone down the drain as well in, 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 in a lot of cases. And yeah. How? Again, we've been what we've <coughs> excuse me. We've been warned about these things. It's true. You know, we're warned about an organization called the Ministry of Truth. Yep. And well, the idea that there's a simple single Ministry of Truth is, is a terrifying Orwellian concept. <laughs> and because we've been warned about this, we should guard against it. Yeah, but we don't. Not enough. But how do you survive as that respect on your with your channel because I I've heard you say that I you, you try to follow the guidelines as, as good as you can for example the YouTube guidelines and and you often refer to them refer to them how will we survive in this world how how, how do you cope with it um, well the you're right Gu media guidelines have to be navigated. And a lot of it at the moment works on uh, artificial intelligence, I think. Mm -hmm. So I'm not too interested in artificial intelligence. I'm more interested in human intelligence. <laughs> and, you know, I, I think if you kind of work out a way to communicate with other human beings, mm -hmm. with all the gestures that we have as human beings and all the <laughs> nonverbal communications that we have, if you get my drift, uh, Nico, uh, as human beings, um, yeah. you, you know, we, we, p people are missing that human to human contact. And, you know, people watching don't know me, but, um, you know, I I do try. <laughs> I'm a fallible human being, of course, you get it wrong. Um, but I, I, I do try to be honest and um, as far as possible, it's not always possible for, for various reasons, but what you know, when 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 knowledge is changes, I'll try and come back and bring that up to date, and I'll try and I'll try and correct that. No, but um, in a way, I, 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 
know you shy away if I uh, compliment you, but but uh, from the start, I've I've you did not just communicate by words. I mean, you, in my opinion, a master in in using everything you have in in your communication, and that's one of the reason I, reasons I've from the start being attracted to your channel. Because I, I always had the feeling here is a development going on. Here is someone who is trying to read between the lines and trying to convince <laughs> me to do the same. And, and you have certain ways which I admire to, to get people to, to truly listen to you. It's not just words. It's like the whole uh, man who's communicating. And yeah, I mean, it, 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 does, it does sound a bit pompous, but I, I, I am genuinely interested in human well-being. Yeah. You know, if, if, if I can prevent human pain, suffering and death, then that's what I'll do. That, that That's what I spent my life doing. And um, if you just try and communicate that as honestly as you can. Um, now, there, there, there is a bit of electronic trickery to it. You know, you've got to have a reasonable quality microphone so that you're, you, you know, the quality of your voice is important. You got to have a reasonable quality camera. You, my son has got to set up quite a lot of technical things from it. I haven't got a clue about. Me um, but 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 basically, it's just using. You know, when when you're a clinical nurse, very often you're working with people who are distressed, mm -hmm. in pain, all the time, yeah. dying, yeah, bereaved, and you know, if you're genuine, I suppose over. 40, 45 years of practice, you do kind of work out a way to come alongside is the best you can do, really. Yeah. You know, could come alongside people that are in a, in a difficult situation. And, um, uh, you know, but because I have no skills in the area of uh, music or artistry or uh, acting... <laughs> No skills at all. all. All I can do is is be me. I'm not saying this is necessarily me completely. You know, people that know me will say that I'm I'm much grumpier than this, or you know, John's not really this friendly, or <laughs> and I'll I'll accept all that. But you know, it, it is this is you know the 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 teaching, what you might call clinical role. It's the only one I have. It it, it is it's quite it's quite hard work sometimes, but it is. I think maybe people do see that that's genuine. It's just me, but but I'm I am trying, and maybe people recognise that. I don't know. I've I've been with you on an on an on an interesting voyage. That's the way I see it, and that's the way I hear many people talk about you. Uh, it was a voyage of voyage. Oh yeah. Oh, which yeah. we learned and and uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, but we we have to we have to move with the evidence. If we're not evidence based, we're living in a parallel universe that's not real. No, but that's the the the, the thing that hurts me for you that whatever you do is is extremely data driven, and it's not just data driven. It's 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 understandable for everyone. I mean, you could have two dance classes and nothing more educational wise, and you would still be able to understand what you're saying. It's a capacity you have to make yeah. things very clear, very understandable. Um, it, it 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 is data, Nico, but it's also applying basic principles. So you you know that the, there are there are some basic principles that you learn from a lifetime teaching in healthcare, and uh, you know situations where they need to be applied. And one of the things I feel disappointed in myself about is sometimes I've been influenced by the mainstream narrative rather than going back to the fundamental basic science. So so for example for. I mean, I first learned about the immune system when I was a teenager. And then uh, when I was doing my a bachelor of science degree in my 30s, I learned about the immune system in great deal of detail. And, um, and, and then in future work, I've, I've learned about the immune system. And, um, you know, the innate immune system is a truly wonderful thing. And since then, I've I've worked, uh, interviewed leading physicians, really leading physicians around the world who've taught me way, way more. I mean, Professor Clancy in Australia, we did a whole series yeah. on, on immunity. And it's, it's, it's like we're sitting talking now. There's just him and me sitting, having a chat. But you're talking to the world, one of the world's leading authorities on this. And, and you just learn so much. So there's these principles that we can apply to, a you know, knowledge 
basic knowledge that we can apply that's not going to change. You know, you know, basic physics worked out by Isaac Newton in 1660 or whatever it was, isn't going to change. It can be refined, yeah. you know, but still for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And if you forget that basic stuff, and it's the same with things like physiology, human health, natural immunity, you know, th these are fundamental things that reflect the, the way, the way the world is. And, um, if, if 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 you forget those because of an authority figure, that that's a, that's a problem. Yeah. Um, you know that 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 that's why I wrote my textbooks. The 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 basic physiology, the basic pathophysiology. It's just really basic things. There's no, there's nothing clever in them, but you cover all these basic things that are based on the science that we've learned since the Enlightenment. You know, since since uh, Prince William. Uh, from the Netherlands came to rescue the British people from a difficult situation. Thank you. You know, you've, you, you've helped us out in the past. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we've stood side by side and um, uh, not everyone in the UK would agree with that, of course. <laughs> but, uh, wow. it, do, it, do, it does show the commonality of our history and our peoples, which is a, is a, is a thing to celebrate. Um, but we've been, been working on these enlightenment scientific principles all this time and we have them. And it would be really sad if science were subjugated to vested interests. That that, yeah. that would be that would be tragic, it's because we have the science. But problem is, no one no one is the science. No, <laughs> no, no one can well, claim to be the science. I I wouldn't say, listen, I'm John Campbell. I am the science. No, but I would consider that to be arrogant. Yeah, but those and the words... fact that some people have indicated in that direction, I do find disappointing. But but there is there is science there, and we can tap into that. And and it, it's it's not the only way to truth, of course no, not. We, we, we learn truth through history, we learn truth through our spirituality. But science is one way that we do learn about truth, and yeah. we, we we need to apply those principles. But there is a problem because those two words, the science, I've heard too often over the last uh, three years. Me at too. least, care to shit out of yeah. because uh, there is no the science. <laughs> No, there is science, and it should be looked at from all kinds of perspectives. And and but I'm but quite we, we are we are we are blessed with great scientists that will talk to you and me. Yeah, but the problem is that um, when I was much younger, people told me that I had to go to school and do the best I could because then and only then could I be a great scientist. And then I went to school and I thought, well, if this is it, if I have to sit here for a year and learn what I could learn in like. A week and a half, that's horrible, can't be science. But at the same time, I think, and I don't know how you see this, I, I, I believe in study and I believe in research and I believe in everything that has to do with science, but I don't believe in our schooling system. That is a problem. And just because I didn't believe it, I could find my own path. I could, for example, write my own uh, scientifically based book, yeah. but I didn't follow the science as in the science. I just, yeah. I think we're in a situation now where you can, to a large extent, research your own particular topic that you're interested in. But there again, I think especially in medicine, um, it is difficult because of the vested interest that we talked about, which can distort the knowledge that is yeah. available. Um, that, that that's why it's, I I believe it's so important to go back to the fundamental principles of science that don't really change and that we can apply. The world does work in a particular way. We don't understand most of it, but there are a few simplified models that we do understand. And if we apply these, we do come out with things that are really quite sensible. And yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. We need to go back and and, and learn about these and um, bear in mind they exist. And if something completely contradicts the basic science, then it's probably wrong. But it's still, you still have, should have a look at it because yeah. you're right. <laughs> I mean, it's it's, um, it's it's a difficult situation. Um, mm. I don't know how we how we, uh, and it, it's getting harder to contribute to uh, to to a more open mindset in people because we're controlled, we're censored, 
and and that's difficult. Uh, I I really I have not found an answer to 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 circumvent it to 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 get the message out. And and my only message is do your own research, which is something yeah. that has been uh, I've not been allowed to say that for three years because there was quite an issue in the in in America to not do your own research, but. Um, yeah. I, I, and, and I think the other thing we talked about is is try and develop a local group of people that you do trust, mm -hmm. that you can talk about, where you can pool expertise. And uh, and yeah, we, we 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 should be free human beings to come up with our own answers, whether that's about ecology, whether that's about politics, whether that's about science, whether it's about our health. Um, you know, free freedom of thought should be completely fundamental. Yeah. And um, you know, at the moment there are people trying to control thought, and that is a bit that is a bit frightening. It is very frightening, especially again. We were war we were warned about this. The group called the Thought Police. Yeah. Um, we were warned about this. If we don't yeah. take warnings from these, you know, th there's a reason that George Orwell has become one of the world's greatest authors, because he has something to say today. Still, it's true. And maybe we would be arrogant to dismiss his warnings. I, 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 I don't know. I find it hard to just have a proper conversation with people and 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 something. And I tried to figure out what it was, but I, I had this stupid idea that the day we had obligated uh, schooling, from that day onwards, we've become more stupid. Yeah, I, I mean, like edu education, of course can be used as a, as a modality of control. I mean, I, 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 did, I spent a year doing a certificate of education once. And, uh, you, you know, you kind of look into these things. Um, you know, is there a pedagogy of oppressed people was, was one of the popular books, Pedagogy yeah. of the Oppressed. Um, the, the education can be used. And again, we've seen tragic examples of this in relatively recent European history, where, where a generation can be schooled in a particular way of thinking and uh that that's had dramatic consequences in in relatively recent european history I, I can only admit that what saved me when i went to school for the first time and i looked forward to it because i thought well now the big learning is going to start and it didn't but what saved me were my books because I read when i was a young child and i read a lot and the first day at school things were told to me that i thought well, I, Maybe, maybe it's true, but it's not really like I read in my books. And 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 so I, I was skeptical from the start. And when I looked left or right, I just saw children looking at the the the, the, the whoever was in front of the class and now, okay, okay. I mean, I lived in great times. Many times it has been told to me, the times I lived in were great because in the past it was worse and in other countries it is worse. And I thought, I'm not a strong argument. I mean, I was seven. But I thought, no, nah, it's not a good argument. Uh, was it so bad in the earlier days? Is it so bad in other countries? And the only thing I wanted was to explore. I didn't have a time machine, but I could travel. So I went to all these other countries. And it's something I wanted to talk to you about because you have an interest in Africa and Asia. But I went to all these other countries and those people didn't live bad. They are badly, they live different, differently, which is not bad. And a lot of poverty I saw in Africa was western imposed poverty because we could have left those people alone and and try to leave them to fend for themselves and they can they can in asia they can in africa but i mean you have an, a special interest in, in in asia and africa but it's especially with uganda i think yeah we, we've got we've got a project uh, that we're cooperating with in uganda um buanga way to health okay um, we work with a medical officer there called uh, Wafafa, Andrew, primarily. It's very small scale, but it is, it is, we believe it's helping a lot of people. So I was out there last year, um, hoping to get out again fairly soon. Um, th there's a lot of situations where a relatively small input can, can make a, a really big difference. So um, now we could argue about the causes of poverty, but the, the, the poverty is real. And um, 
sometimes just helping people in a, in a relatively minor way can can be transformational. So, for example, uh, when, when we go, when Rafafa goes around doing a medical calls, he will usually take a tree mm -hmm. and we'll plant a, a fruit tree. <laughs> so that's going to provide, you know, food into the next generation. We, we, um, we've, uh, you know, as well as as well as medical work and helping individuals, um, we've done quite a lot to promote health in communities. So simple things like screening for high blood pressure, yep. uh, screening for diabetes. Um, we've given out quite a lot of uh, mosquito nets because it's just tragic how many children malaria. still die of malaria. Yep. Terrible, terrible. We've had several children die of malaria. He hasn't got there in time and it's terrible tragedy. So again, w w let's try and prevent that. Let's, you know, relatively simple interventions. I think we've given out 1,500, a couple of thousand mosquito nets and you know there's no question in my mind that saved lives from people getting malaria yeah but i i find this interesting because I, I i work with a lot of bigger organizations in africa or at least try to work with them and what i found out what i, what I discovered and what i believe is that when individuals were involved they could they were doing good things in africa like you're as an individual uh handing out mosquito nets which is very tangible it's very it's 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 simple but the bigger the organizations went the, the, there was a, a point when i felt they were only doing harm instead of doing any good so i, I believe in in these uh individual exploits as to helping people because often they work but as soon well, as I I, 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 bigger, I, I I mean i can't speak to all the bigger ones I, I simply don't have the knowledge to do that but you know i know that what we're doing I'm convinced it works. It's based on it's based on largely based on friendship, to be quite honest, mm -hmm. uh, based on trust, mm -hmm. uh, based in a small scale situation. So um, we avoid Western hegemony. It's not me telling him what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we we develop and uh, use local expertise wherever yeah. possible. Um, we have a small number of trusted people. So hopefully we don't have the problems with corruption that, mm -hmm. that, that that can be an issue and and we try and do things that are consistent with the local uh, ecology in a local way so i mentioned planting fruit trees we've also uh we grow some crops we grow maize we intercrop that with uh with beans we've recently developed a, a mill so we're able to produce the flour ourselves now that can be sold at a a, a modest profit with that, we are buying food for children who there's 200 orphans and locally who would struggle for good quality food. Um, so we're able to feed those now. We've recently just uh, built a, a large uh, chicken facility for chickens. For eggs. Right. <laughs> so, you know, th these are, but these are relatively small scale local projects aimed at improving health, providing a little bit of employment, provide, you know, help helping with education, treating diseases, in in specific uh, situations, helping people with diseases, very often the interventions that are required are relatively simple. Are so you, you know, yeah, people's lives can be saved by giving anti-malarials or giving antibiotics. How do you fund your operation? How's it? How, how does it work? Well, uh, uh, the, uh, pe people make donations okay. to it. Yep. Um, the channel does support it directly. Yep. Money yep. that comes from from the channel. So it, it's it's pretty small scale, but it's uh it, it's the channel. It's individuals who are interested. Sometimes uh, people will take on a particular project. Okay. So you know, um, with Afro, we'll perhaps do a video where he identifies. Uh, and this is the good aspect of the internet. This is a good aspects of communication. Yeah. Someone with a particular problem, maybe it will require surgery. And 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 quite a few times, someone has thought, you know, I I think I'll I'll help that individual, and they've sent money to provide a surgery or treatment or a facility for that particular for that particular individual and uh, so again it's giving the it's bringing it back down to the personal scale whereas one individual you know has maybe given a few hundred dollars so another individual can have maybe some surgery that can be that can be life saving or transformational uh so it, it's bringing things back down to the individual level not at the large sort of scale level that, you, that, that i don't understand and as i hear you talk uh, you don't want to step over cultural boundaries and and, and impose our western way of thinking on those people in africa which i think is should be the basis of, of helping our people 
trust, friendship, as you said, and not trying to impose a way of living on other people, just help them. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the word the word we you like to use is synergy. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, be, it's better than the, you know, the, 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 the whole is better than the sum of the parts. Yeah. That's what we would hope. If we don't if we don't achieve that, the, the project's failed. But I don't believe it is failing. I believe it's doing really quite significant things. And um I think it's a potential model that other people could follow in other yeah. in other areas. Yeah. You know, but based on interpersonal relationships, based on relatively small scale, yeah, getting trusted people together. I mean, the other thing we're doing is we've just bought 10 sewing machines. Hey. Treadled sewing machines. Yeah. You know, just move them with move them with your feet. Um, and, um, you know, we've got a local expert who's training up, um, people who, to become skilled in self-sufficient sewing, you know, we can sell these, you know, we've got skills again, you know, the sewing machines are about 150, $160 each, yeah. uh, but if you haven't got $160, that's an infinite amount of money, Yeah. but you know, we can, so we bought. 10 sewing machines and we've employed that provides employment for 20 people. I, th I think that's a good thing. Yeah. But the most important word you used is self-sufficient. Absolutely. That's the most important word because if, if not all, everything's lost. I think if we start. Yeah, the, 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 other, the, the other kind of catchphrase, if you like, or principle is, is empowerment, not aid. Yeah. yeah, true. It's very much about empowering individuals. And um, I mean, I guess that's what we're trying to do here as well give people the information to empower themselves to yeah. become independent thinkers again that's good and yeah, um, that, you're leaving for uganda soon again um i'm hoping to go next year well it should be very disappointing not to go next year at some point um it's just a question of when we can fit that in yeah but really hope so yeah because yeah. you did quite some of your podcasts from uganda and I yeah we did quite a few videos there, there. yeah it's, it's always nice to it's always nice to do live interview. This technology is great. It's a lot better than nothing. But well, I, I, I particularly enjoyed the uh, podcast you made with the doctor you work with because yeah. uh, he was quite sobering up in, in, in what was then the issue. He gave his opinion about how it was in Africa and it was like really refreshing to hear him. Oh, the, 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 uh, basically... It looked like COVID just kind of swept through the country. Most people got a pretty minor cold, and and yeah. that was it. Um, and that, and and for years now, it's simply been no issue. And um, I think it's fair to say that the most of the immunity in Uganda is not caused by sophisticated scientific, shall we say, vaccinations and other procedures. It was just based on you know trying to optimize health and people getting natural immunity. And uh, they, they don't even consider it now. It's not, uh, they don't, they, the, the doctors don't see people ill with COVID now. No, it was, it was. Or well, very, very, very rarely, very rarely if they do. I, I found it very uh, interesting to uh, hear your colleague talk about what happened there. And he was like, 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 oh, nothing wrong. It's, it's, it's okay here. And it was, it was fun to watch. But the, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not minimizing it too much. There the were there oh. were things, but 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 you know, basically, they've got over it in in mostly a natural way. Wafafa himself, for example, was never vaccinated. No, oh. and, and he works with sick people all the time. <laughs> but there again, he's, he's, young, he's young and fit. You know, you, you can't generalize these things. No, and it's it's. Uh, I I I do my best to to just skip the, the the subject because it, it doesn't make any sense i i mean I, we could talk about it and for hours probably and, and 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 but it's it's whenever i go out on the streets it's it's it doesn't make any sense and i understand i mean i understand people in a way i just try to to subtly change their minds and it's difficult um and and i, I think you do a great thing as to that regard um talking I don't, about I don't think I don't, I don't think it's even good to try and change people's minds just 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 give them information well, give people science and, and, yeah. and let, let let them decide you yeah, know what, facilitate that process i'm with you but when i talk about changing people's minds it's more because of what we talked about earlier in 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 uh, perceiving authority 
please read something else than the, the regular papers is what I try to convince people of, like the, the getting to these uh, uh, alternative media and, and, and try to inform yourself in a, in a, in a broader scope than you're doing when yep. you read the, that newspaper every day because there's nothing in there. Yeah, learn, learn from John the Baptist, learn from Solomon Ash, learn from Stanley Milgram, yeah. learn from George Orwell. Those we stand the on the shoulders of giants. Yeah, doing a show today, a podcast? I, I, probably. Um, I've, I've, um, I did a video yesterday with uh, Dr. Tess Laurie on the New World Health uh, Organization uh, goings on, shall we say. Um, th there's always there's always interesting things to do. Um it's just a case of how much capacity you've got. I've done. A, I'm doing a great episode at the moment with uh, talking about talking, standing on the shoulders of giants. I mean, I've talked to great professors and doing a great series at the moment with uh, with Dr. Claire Craig, okay. British pathologist. Um, so I'm hoping to do a bit more reading and 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 finish off the series with her. It's it's just we we have such dedicated, good quality people out there. Oh man, there's a lot of them, but but it's hard to listen to to hear them because they're censored in a way and, it, it, yeah uh, we, we we have to we, we have to uh use human to human yep communication <laughs> and try and avoid the I artificial see. intelligence we want human intelligence <laughs> don't, don't we nico i see the point it was extremely lovely to talk to you um I hope to stay in contact with you because uh, it's lovely. But I, I see you basically every day when you do your podcast. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I, I hope you keep doing it. I hope you find ways to get the proper message out. Um, I, I hope you look down and see that we stand on the shoulders of giants yep. and, and learn. And, 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 and let, let, let's all work out ways to help ourselves and more importantly, help those around us.